Well, hello you bearded bastards and welcome back once again to the wondrous realm known as tar -en, the land of legends. And today, my friends, we're going to be heading up here to the north, far, far to the north, a land of freezing winds and sweeping glaciers, up to the treacherous mountains known as the Spines of Tapering, wherein lie vast deposits of valuable and useful metal. Now, you may be asking yourselves, what brings us up here to the north, to this extremely forbidding land? Well, you see, we are of course checking in on another small group of dwarves. Dwarves who hail from the civilization known as the Buff Crafts. These dwarves call themselves Einodust, the Gate Breach, and their fortress is called Orinod, Large Gate. And actually, they're not here to construct their own fortress. Because you see, Large Gate is an ancient fortress created at the beginning of recorded time. It has stood at this place for more than 250 years, but its inhabitants were all killed and the fortress ruined some 30 years ago. It was taken down by the northern goblin tribes known as the Gaunt Dread, mortal enemies of the buff crafts, and those goblins are also the reason the dwarves of Inodust have taken their particular symbol. Their symbol is a goblin being struck down by a great many arrows. They raise this flag proudly above their ancient fortress, and yet these dwarves aren't the most proud or noble individuals. No, no. Now you may be thinking that these dwarves are here to reclaim some lost, forgotten part of their history, but that is simply not the case. No, you see, this small group of dwarves here has no interest in such lofty endeavors, and in fact, these dwarves are a bit more shifty. Huh. They're only here because nobody else wants them and the unused ruins of old Oranad seem to be a good place to make a little base camp. Now then, our goal here with this small group of dwarves is to go out and steal artifacts. Yes, these dwarves are thieves, and I have a little plan that I've wanted to put into play for quite some time now. Now, you see, when I set up this small group of dwarves here, I made sure that each and every one of them have high ranks in ambusher and tactician skills because I would really like to send them out on raids and have them sneakily steal stuff away from other civilizations. An ambusher is the most important skill for that. I made them all tacticians too, because tacticians are pretty hard to come by, and I figure if we get more migrants here, then I could set each of these seven dwarves as leaders of their own squads, and hopefully they can successfully command the other new migrant dwarves. Will that be possible? Hell if I know, not too sure. That's why we're trying it out. Oh, and another thing, when we had started out here, I also set up this group with a certain specific materials. They have no battle axes or mining picks, but instead I wanted to try just setting them out with a bunch of copper bars and logs so that we can forge our own tools. That might be a bit cheaper actually, I've never tried that before, and it's going to take some time, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be worth it. Also you can see we have a bunch of chickens here. Chickens are non-grazing creatures, and I figured up here in the mountains to the north, there's not going to be much place to graze at all. Plus we can get leather from them, as well as eggs of course, that'd be pretty handy. Also another thing, I have set the cap of dwarves in this fortress extremely low. I'm hoping to have no more than 14 dwarves here in the fortress, to start anyways. I was hoping to use these seven migrant dwarves here to just kind of put together a nice stable tiny fortress first, and then we can get some more in here, and possibly we could do some raiding in the meantime too. We'll just like send out one dwarf at a time or something, that'd be pretty cool. Anyways, okay, that's enough blabbering. Let's get down to business. And we could start off by taking a little look around. Well, this is pretty strange. Straight off the bat over here, we have a trade depot. And you can see there's actually a trio of dwarves here. We have Nil, the Count of Wordy Clasped, as well as Ainul, the Countess of Silver Rain, and Kulet, a diplomat. Very interesting and pretty strange too. Not too sure what they're all doing here, but this is our fortress now. Don't go touching our stuff, you. Also, having a look around this area here, you know, I don't think we had to be concerned with bringing anything with us at all, because just from first glances, it looks like there's plenty of stuff for us to use, just in this one tiny area. There's a small tavern built here to the north, a tavern named the Berry of Baking, and it looks fairly well established. There are quite a few instruments in there, as well as some goblets and cups. Very good. And then down here to the south, there's a library, named the Insightful Treasury. And wow. It is absolutely stocked full of books and scrolls, all over the place, piling out the doors even. There are two levels, and both levels are absolutely crammed like that. Fascinating. Wow. Like, way more books than I even thought. Look at this. 
This is just a single tile of the library. All of these books are on one square. And here's another, and another, and another. There are hundreds of books in this library. Cool. We might be able to sell them to traders. Dwarves, I'm pretty sure, were already rich. And would you look at that? The library is actually made of gold blocks. <laughs> That's awesome. In a pinch, we could deconstruct it and use that gold for our own purposes. Who needs a library anyways? And actually, while we're still up here on the surface, I'm having a look around and you can see all these other treasures just scattered around out in the snow. And there are a lot of them too. Not just books either, although there are quite a few. Are these artifacts? That's pretty remarkable if they are. Here we can see Baladazin in Orthoclase Othduk. Wow, definitely cool. And here we have Notonamol, birth sensed, a red spinal knowledge, another instrument. Oh, and here's Idrathgenlath, treasure seduce, a dwarf bone table. Fascinating. And there are so many more out here too. <laughs> Dwarves, we are already incredibly wealthy. Why the hell hasn't anybody come back to reclaim this place? Unthinkable. Anyways, if all that stuff is up here, imagine what is down below, dwarves. Let's get a move on. We have this twisting ramp here for the dwarves to travel on. Certainly dangerous. Watch your step, dwarves. Ah, and here we are, the first stop. Looks to be an underground road. The caverns are open here, which is a bit dangerous. We'll have to try to get those blocked up soon. And the road looks to be heading off to the west. Back towards the mountain homes, I guess. Heading down just a little bit here. And we can see the first actual level of the fortress. Carved into marble, it looks like there are two layers, and they are expansive. And looking down from that ledge up there, you can see a couple more dwarves in the stockpile down here. We have Shorast, a general, Aiden, a baron, and Nil, the queen of our civilization. What the hell is she doing here? What are, what are any of these dwarves doing here? Doesn't really make a ton of sense. And I'm going to note as well that all of these dwarves are showing up as being hostile which is not excellent, although it does not look like they are aggressive to our dwarves. So it looks like we're gonna have to have ourselves a live and let live policy here. As long as they don't bother us, we won't bother them. There's plenty of space here in this fortress anyways. All right, dwarves, before we go any deeper, how about we check around this layer first, just to see what there is to see. And remember, stay wary. You never know what could pop up in here. Okay, here we go, heading through the darkened halls. We have ourselves a bit of a forge here. Very interesting. Some statues as well. And as we continue on, you can see a bunch of bedrooms. Boy, this is one spacious fortress. Yeah, plenty of room here. And supplies too. Man, oh man, would you look at this? Weapons, armor, all kinds of crafts. Well, I guess that kind of nullifies our plans of bringing just limited materials with us, huh? There is so much stuff in this fortress. In fact, I can't even think of anything we'll have to produce now. Maybe some food, but we could trade a lot of this stuff for the merchants when they show up. All right, dwarves, I guess that's going to about do it for this level here. We have our residential layer as well as an expansive workshop layer below. But now I think we have to head farther down just to see what lies beneath. What do you say, dwarves? Let's do it. Down, down, down. Quite a ways once more to this little layer right here, which strangely yet again seems to be home to some vagrant nobility. Not too sure why that is. And I did check and all these nobles do belong to our civilization. I thought maybe they belonged to a different dwarven civilization and they just happened to be hanging out in this ruined fortress, but no. This is all the nobility of the buff crafts. Just kind of in hiding here, I guess. Anyways, this looks to be a museum lair, which is very handy. We will certainly need a place to store all of our treasures. Looks to be fairly well appointed too with some display cases and pedestals. Excellent. Anywho, that looks to be all that's in here. And so we will continue on our downward trek, which brings us here, the very bottom level of the fortress the Magma Forge Lair, with enough forges to keep us busy for a long, long time. Just excellent. And as a side note, there appears to be more vagrant nobility down here, just in case you were wondering. Anyways, dwarves, it looks like we're all set here in Large Gate. Pretty much everything we'll ever need is all taken care of already. But we're talking needs here. We have to remember that these dwarves are thieves, and so we're mostly dealing with wants. And as thieves, we are wont to want more treasures. <laughs> and I suppose there is no treasure greater than knowledge. Or that seems to be what the dwarves think anyways. They're all up here in the library reading books. Which is interesting. Knowledge is power after all, right? But dwarves, we can't go getting complacent just yet. Even though we do have a ton of supplies here, we still have a lot to do. And so let's get straight to it. First off, we're going to build some workshops. Some mason workshops. Because we need a lot of rock blocks. 
Security-wise, this fortress is kind of a mess. We have a big open space leading down to the tunnels, which is extremely dangerous. And on top of that, we're also at war with the Gaunt Dread Goblins. And you know, I'm not too sure if they're going to send large sieges to us just yet, but eh, I don't know. Usually when you start a new fortress, you're not quite at war with them just yet, but we are. And so if they do show up, we're going to need a way to protect ourselves. Oh geez, trouble already. It looks like some troglodytes crawled up from the caverns. And uh, well, it looks like the nobility took care of it. <laughs> Thanks guys. Oh, but uh, one of the vagrant dwarves who was living here did not survive. That's a shame. Oh well. Yeah, before we do much else, I really want to secure the caverns. Troglodytes aren't even that bad of a threat. We all know there could be much, much worse things down there. We'll block up these gaps with a wall and we'll also put a bridge down to act as a gate. Shouldn't take too long. And there we go, did not take long at all. We'll just have to get it linked up to a lever now. Not a biggie. And we're doing the same thing topside as well. We blocked up the former southern gate and are building one over here to the east. A large gate. I figured that'd be apt. And we're going to get that one hooked up to a lever too, just as fast as we can. Oh, looks like we uh, missed a bit of combat down here. A giant cave toad crept in from the caverns and was put down by the queen and her attendants once again. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I imagine they're fairly accustomed to this sort of thing at this point. What a mess, though, huh? We have blood all over the place, giant cave toad pieces, a dead dwarf stinking up the halls. Not good. We're going to have to get that squared away ASAP. And actually, I just noticed we have a couple of elk birds trying to get in, too. The bastards. Give us a damn second over here. All right, somebody close up this gate. It's all linked up now. Okay, there we go. Nice and safe. And we did just seal off this surface as well, so nothing can get in or out. We need some time to work in peace. We just built a couple of coffins and placed them in this back room here. We're going to use this as a makeshift tomb for now. And then over in this back room, we're just going to stuff all kinds of nasty refuse, pieces of animals and dwarves, monster corpses, that sort of stuff, just to kind of keep it out of the way. Oh, and I just noticed this elk bird here running around the halls. Must have accidentally locked it in when we closed up the gate down there. Well, I suppose while the dwarves are working, it wouldn't hurt to take a look at the thing. An elk bird is a large creature found grazing on mushrooms deep underground. It walks on two legs and has the head of a bird with the antlers of a great elk. This one's feathers are brown, her skin is dark peach, and her eyes are black. Fascinating. Now, this would be a very good creature to get our hands on. Kind of like a big chicken, I suppose. But elk birds do graze. And unless we could find a safe way to have her graze out in the tunnel somewhere, then it would be out of the question. This thing can't survive in here, unfortunately. Ah, oh, damn it. Up here on the surface, the merchants have arrived, but their wagons couldn't get in because we closed our gate. I didn't realize how late it was in the year, but we did just open the gate and at least we could trade with a few merchants that did arrive. It won't be much, but it's better than nothing. And look at all the stuff we get to trade. I knew we had a ton of stuff here in the fortress, but wow, I mean, we're pretty well off, I'd say. All these books and instruments, they gotta be worth something, right? Just having a look here and, well, you know, it actually looks like they did bring a decent amount. So we're going to be all set on trade for a little bit. Anywho, back to work down here in the fortress. And you can see some of the dwarves picking away at this wall here, just trying to open up this space a bit. There is so much room in this fortress, but there's no real great centralized area. And so I just kind of saw this cluster of wide hallways here and figured we could use it as a meeting hall. Once we get it opened up a little bit anyways. So that's what we're doing. Also, I did designate a couple of these rooms over here as bedrooms. Uh, just kind of in this little cluster over this way here. Just so that dwarves didn't choose bedrooms all over the place. Again, I really kind of want to keep things a bit centralized. Hey, would you look at this? In from the tundra comes our first wave of migrants. You know, I was a little shaky about getting some new faces here in the fortress because we have all this treasure now. It'd be a shame to have to spread it too thinly amongst us. But we could really use their help down in the fortress. There is so much we have to do. And so come on down, you bastards. Just be aware you're going to be worked hard. And you're not going to get that big of a cut either. Terribly sorry. Having a look at our population, we are now up to 13 dwarves, one shy of our cap. Very good. Oh, but uh, let's hold our horses for just a second here. The magma crab is fighting. Let's see what's going on. All right, looks like a magma crab was fighting with one of our dwarves, one of the new migrants, it seems, over in this ramp that leads down to the lower levels. And it is still here, quite panicked, uh, experiencing mortal fear, actually. And looking down to the magma forge layer, there are quite a few more heading up. Magma crabs, I'm sure you could have guessed, come from magma, which is just beneath our fortress under our magma forges. In fact, that is exactly how this small group of crabs got into our fortress through the forges. And just because I'm aware of things like magma crabs, I did lock these doors here. But unfortunately, I did not realize that this wall here has a big hole in it. And so these things could wander straight in. Live and learn, I suppose. 
Anyways, while we're here, let's say we have a look at these things. A magma crab is a small, rock-eating creature that lives in molten rock. It scurries on little feet and swims through liquid rock with sharp wings. It uses magma to digest rock and spits out burning globs. Their exterior is black. And I will note too that magma crabs do not have any pinchers. In fact, they're really more just like a ball with wings. Although I believe their exoskeleton is pretty tough. And they do in fact spit out globs of magma too, which can be very deadly to dwarves. So I'm kind of spooked by these guys to be perfectly honest. We don't really have a good way to handle this. But you know, there is a whole bunch of armor and weapons lying around this old fortress. And so how about we put the new guys to the test? They have to start earning their keep around here. And this is an excellent way to do that. All right, dwarves, assemble your gear. And I'm going to try to have them group up here next to this panicking magma crab. But we'll see what happens. Hopefully they can get here in time. All right, game is unpaused. This crab is just freaking out uh, and was killed. Fantastic. And we can see that that crab was spitting out globs of molten rock, which luckily do not seem to have hit any of our dwarves. I don't think that would go very well if it did. Looking down to the magma forges and... Oh, you know what? This other group of crabs can't get into the fortress, I just realized. Not unless they go back down into the magma and re-emerge from one of these northern forges. Phew, okay. I guess we're safe. And so with that in mind, we really do have to deal with this threat. I don't want these things wandering around. Get down here, new guys. We have some crabs to deal with. Gonna unlock this door, taking things slowly. Okay, and here they go, heading through the door, and he's, oh, I just saw some magma right there. Something got caught on fire, I think it was a dwarf. Uh, one of the crabs has died. I am, ooh, ooh, no, ooh, it's not good. I'm seeing dwarves getting caught on fire. Uh, I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna lock this door, actually. I'm gonna lock that right up. There we go, never mind. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. That's not good. Hmm, yeah, we got three of our warriors on fire right now. That's pretty awful. Well, you know what? How about the rest of you guys get in there? Yeah, go, go, just go for it. Let's see what happens. Moving quickly. Okay, that door is unlocked. And, um, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. A lot of smoke, blood, dwarves running, panicking through the fortress. Not seen any crabs. The crabs are gone, seemingly. Oh, yeah, they went back down into the magma. Well, um, okay, noted. Magma crabs are pretty dangerous. Now we know. Just gonna lock up this door once more. Should have kept it locked, I suppose. But once again, you live, you learn, you have some fun. And in the meantime, I'm gonna get somebody down here to block up this wall, just for safety's sake. There we go, wonderful. Anywho, at this point, we've been here in Large Gate for the greater part of a year, and I'd say things are going pretty well, other than the sporadic deaths, I suppose. But besides that, the dwarves are happy. We've only lost some of the new guys. And them's the breaks. They wanted to live here, so that's what happens. Anyways, I am realizing now that we haven't done one single raid yet. Possibly because we're feeling a little complacent. We do have an awful lot of artifacts already. But once more, we want more. We're terribly greedy here. And so let's do it already. I'm going to start off a new squad called the Gate Bandits. And these dwarves are all going to be armed with crossbows and bolts as well as leather armor so they can maintain their mobility. And this squad is going to be headed up by Asmel, our expedition leader. And alongside Asmel, I'm going to put a couple other dwarves. Um, how about Alaf and Degel? And one of the new guys too. Tossid, how about? There we go. We'll start out with this group of four and see how they do. I have a feeling they're gonna do very well if we're just sneaking around, but I definitely shouldn't have said that. Just realized I can change how many bolts they carry with them. And like, you can really make them carry 2000 plus bolts. Will they do that? That's crazy. Um, let's tone it down a tad, how about? That should be fine. And then we'll let them wander around a bit and collect all their gear. As a reminder, these dwarves aren't fighters, but they are very, very sneaky, and that's going to be key here. I'm just now realizing that these dwarves do not have enough equipment for their squad. Their tiny squad of four dwarves. Well, that's a shame. I guess there's not a ton of leather armor in this fortress. Or crossbows, for that matter. Yeah, should be fine, though. Again, these dwarves aren't going to be doing much fighting, and if they do have to do any fighting, then they're probably going to be dead anyways. And so, let's head out on a little mission. Now then, here is our fortress up in the spines of Tapering, the northernmost fortress of the Buffcrafts. Very proud of that. And then up here to the northwest, we can see the holdings of the Gaunt Dread. There are a number of goblin pits here, as well as a dark fortress. And it does look like they have some holdings farther to the west as well, where they've stolen some forest retreats from the elves. Whole bunch of options here. Well, let's hit A to see a list of known artifacts in the world. And we'll just peruse this list here. I don't know how this works exactly. I think it can be a bit buggy, 
but I'm not too sure. Well, the first couple of artifacts here say they're claimed by local family. But continuing down, the first artifact that is not held by a local family is this one here. Creature Clearing. A human skull totem. Last and lore mind, the Umbra of Wines. Not too sure what that is. I think it's a cave? Tell you what, let's have a stab at that. We're going to try to recover this artifact. And we're going to assign the Gate Bandits. Just like that. Should be easy enough, hopefully. Alright, and here they go, heading up to the surface to retrieve that human skull totem. I wish you the best, dwarves. And while they're away, uh, you know, I have mentioned a couple times that we do have a bunch of books and scrolls and artifacts in the fortress, but I can't really overstate how many there are. Like, you see all these scrolls and books here, and then all these scrolls and books here, on top of a silver spear artifact, a dwarf bone table, more books and scrolls, more artifacts, books and scrolls, more. There's a lot here, like a real lot, like a ton. It's crazy, quite frankly. Wow, yeah, kind of amazing. I've never seen this many artifacts in a single spot in Dwarf Fortress, I don't think. In fact, if you have a look at our library's information, you can see the total number of written objects in the library is 2,232. That's just books and scrolls. I've had the dwarves trying to assemble all the artifacts down here in our meeting hall. You can see I've arranged the tables and chairs into this C shape here, and we piled them all in the middle. And we also have a bunch of display cases and pedestals around as well. There are artifacts all over the place here. Just amazing. It's crazy, I tell you. Oh, and what do we have here? It looks like the elves have arrived to trade. Just a small group, two elves. I assume they're from the Joyous Raven, which is a small elven civilization over to the east. There are a couple elven civilizations over that way, and one of which is called the Speechless Fragrances. We're at war with them. Well, no matter. We can still do a little bit of trading with these guys. For now, anyways. Oh, and while we're still trading, we do have some more migrants here as well. Just a pair. Just as a side note, nothing too fascinating there, really. Still doing some trading here with the elves and managed to get some food. We are starting to get a little low on drinks, but some of the fruit that we got from them can be brewed into drinks, which will stave off dehydration for a little bit, I'm hoping. There's still no sign of the gate bandits, which is worrying. Realizing, too, that I don't know how far away that place was that I sent them to. It's kind of hard to be sure looking at the map. All right, but I forgot I can zoom out on here. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Okay. Yeah, that's far away. It's incredibly far away, actually. Just as a reminder, our fortress is up here in the north. And the place I sent the dwarves is way the hell down here. That is quite a distance. I didn't just... That was not a simple raid at all. That was a journey. Well, here's hoping they bring back some stories alongside that artifact. Yeah, I'm having a look at the map now. In this area... Well, it takes about 19 days to get here, and then they have to come back too, so around 40 days. Okay, well, I guess we'll just keep on waiting, dwarves. That's fine. Looking back down at our meeting hall, it's looking pretty darn good down there. Very well appointed. I did disassemble part of our library up top, because again, books. Who needs them? And I used the gold that was making up the walls to kind of checkerboard the floor like this. A gaudy touch to be sure, but one that was sorely needed. You can see we have our chickens in here as well, of course. I was thinking about sending out another squad while our first is away, but we sent our expedition leader out too, which is kind of foolish, because now we can't appoint new squads. Yeah, that's a bit silly. Well, I'm hoping they come back sometime soon. It keeps snowing outside. A lot. And up here in the spines of tapering, that could mean death for a dwarf. Speaking of death, I could see a couple of our dwarves getting very thirsty now. And in fact, we do not have any more drinks. Gonna try to whip up some alcohol real quick using these new stills. You know, I figure while our raiders are still out, we can start work on a secret hidden passage over here on the mountainside, carved into the ice. That'll be a cool little touch, and I think it'll be a quicker way for our dwarfs to get up to the surface in a hurry. That fort down there is quite a maze. Plus, we can load it up with traps in case we have any surprise guests. I don't intend on having a great number of dwarves here, and so we have to have a very good way to protect ourselves. And I figure out here on the wall we can engrave something into the ice, just to mark this entrance. And those few who do know the mark will be able to find their way here pretty easily, I would imagine. I'll tell you what, we're just going to have a dwarf engrave whatever the hell they want on there. And we'll see what they come up with. Okay, here we are. We have the peasant Asab carving something here. And they're finished. Let's have a look. Alright, looks to be an image of Queen Tobol taking the throne in the year 220. Very interesting. Tobol's the former queen of our civilization. Our current queen is down in the fortress right now, for whatever the hell reason. And so now with this passage completed, from this day forward we tell the allies of Largegate this. A former queen has met with fate. Her icy gaze now marks 
our gate. Yes, perfect, I love it. Okay, and we are still waiting on those raiders, taking an awful long time. And it looks like the humans are here. Wonderful. They're an eastern group as well. Decent fellows. But still, I can't help but wonder where the hell our raiders have gone. Troubling. Got some more migrants here. Another pair. There's still no raiders, though. All right, I'll tell you what. At this point, we're too far along in the fortress, and I'm starting to get a bit upset with how poorly we've been raiding. <laughs> That's kind of the whole point of our fortress. And so I'm going to try a little something here. Uh, I'm going to retire the fortress, just real quick. And if everything goes well, it should just be a little time jump here, and we can pick up right where we were. So stupid to send your expedition leader out like that. Without them, you can't do anything with your military. I just thought it'd be a quick mission, really. But here we are. Okay, there we go. We are back in the fortress. And... Holy hell. What happened? <laughs> oh, no. Well, first off, it looks like our library exploded. And now there are books just, like, actually all over the place. All over the place. Look at this. This is crazy. All scattered throughout the fortress. What a damn mess. Well, to put this in a role-playing perspective, uh, we'll just say that the dwarves threw one hell of a rager when we were away. <laughs> it's the only thing that makes any sense. Oh, uh, but would you look at that? I just got a message that the gate bandits have returned. Huh, okay. Um, Let's uh, check their report. Mission report. Recover creature clearing. Set out winter 275. I was not expecting to see this. That's kind of exciting, actually. Man, oh man, that is quite a trek. All right, they got to the place. Uh, searched through Lure Mind and managed to steal Creature Clearing. That is just brilliant, dwarves. Good job. And then they got to come all the way back, except they appear to be going much, much slower on the return trip. Very interesting. Yeah, look at this. Only about a day is going by every two or three tiles they move here. Oh, but then it picks right back up again and they are off. Why the hell would that be? The first half of their trip was very slow. But here it is. Most Legere. Creature Clearing, a Human Skull Totem. Let's take a closer look at our first stolen treasure. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. That is ridiculous. Most Lagir. This is a Human Skull Totem. That's it. That's, that's it. That is the shortest artifact description I've ever seen. This is an artifact? What What the hell makes an artifact? Boy, just a, just a skull and a stick, right? I mean, that's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> why, is the, why is this an artifact? You guys are the worst bandits, like, ever. Well, um, whatever, that whole fiasco's behind us now. Done and done. And you can see it here in the center of our meeting hall. The thing was one hell of a hassle to get, but at least it has a story behind it. Not a good story, but a story nonetheless. And actually, I'm having a look here, and we are over our population cap, but it would seem that the vagrant nobility has joined our fortress. Hmm, you know... Initially, I would have been against that, but it's kind of interesting to think that that party that was thrown while we were retired pulled all these dwarves together. And maybe now that stuffy nobility is a bit more relaxed. Just as long as they remember that we're the owners of Large Gate now, not them. And you're going to be put to work, you bastards. And I suppose we could start by picking up these thousands upon thousands of books and scrolls. <laughs> That's incredible, really. Well, it looks like we're starting to get to the end of this episode, and I gotta say it was kind of a strange one. It's kind of a shame we did not accomplish our goal of just raiding nearby settlements. That's kind of what I wanted to do. But <laughs> I suppose we got that sweet human skull totem. I think we're going to try to do some more raiding in the next episode, though. We still really haven't even been in this fortress for that long, honestly. It's really only been a year and a half or so. And we had a lot to do to get settled into this place. But I think at this point we could say we are settled enough anyways. And I think that next episode we'll start by sending a few raids up here against the Gaunt Dread Goblins. I know they have treasures in their dark pits. Maybe some food, too. But, again, we're going to be saving that for next episode. Ooh, trouble. Just took a peek down in our Magma Forge level, and it looks like there's a Magma Man down here. From what I understand, they're extremely dangerous and they could break down doors. That's something else we'll have to settle next episode. And here's hoping it doesn't end up being an extremely short episode. Anyways, you bearded bastards, I truly do hope you enjoyed yourselves today. And I certainly hope to see you next time, here in the ancient fortress known as Oranod. Large Gate. And until then, you bearded bastards.